If you're a developer, then you've definitely heard of Visual Studio Code before, or at the very least you have it installed on your computer somewhere. But I have a question for you. When you went to install the software, how did you not just die of cringe when you saw this landing page? I mean, I know Microsoft's been struggling a lot lately, but this has got to be one of the worst landing pages I've seen for a modern software product in like the last decade of looking at landing pages. <laughs> The visual hierarchy is all over the place. This product image is extremely busy and just chaotic. It looks like they made these feature blades in Microsoft Word and just copy pasted them onto the website. We're gonna fix this today. But in order to fix the marketing site itself, reluctantly, I'm also gonna have to redesign the Visual Studio Code Editor as well. Uh, because all these product images have to come from somewhere, and if I'm using the default editor and then changing the site, it's gonna look a little jarring. Now, I don't really want to redesign the code editor because it's more or less functional as is. There's just a couple of alignment spacing and information hierarchy problems that we'll resolve. But either way, this is gonna be a really fun video. We're gonna do our part to drag Microsoft out of the trenches they put themselves in lately. And Billy boy, I'll send you an invoice after this for all the free spec. So before getting completely out of ourselves, we really do need some kind of cohesive style guide uh, so that when we're redesigning both Visual Studio Code and their marketing website, there's some cohesion between them. And we're gonna just sample the colors from their existing site, not changing them too much. That way we preserve a lot of that uh, core identity for VS Code. But we're gonna change the typography. Uh, Sago, new, Sago, Sago UI, Saguo? It's just not gonna cut it. It feels very stale and doesn't really do that much in terms of just a standard interface font anyway. Uh, so we're gonna bump them up to plus Jakarta Sans. Really performant, multi-weight font that we can use to control the visual hierarchy very, very specifically. Oh, and at least for the marketing website, we're gonna transition to a dark theme. Developers like myself are staring at screens all day. We can't afford to hit them with a flashbang of a website. It needs to be dark and subdued to respect those little developer retinas that are doing so much work for us these days. So let's start by redesigning VS Code itself. First of all, I have lots of projects in VS Code and it's kind of weird that every time I need to work on a different project I have to open a new window and completely like switch contexts whereas in tools like Figma I can have multiple projects open at once and just switch contexts seamlessly so we're gonna add a project header here using the standard paradigm of file tabs to indicate to the user that they can swap between projects whenever they want and if a user wants to create a completely new workspace, there's this little plus icon right next to where all the other workspaces are, which should send the signal, hey, this is where you create a new one. We're also going to move the account menu, the settings, and the layout options to the upper right because there's a lot of affordance for settings being in the upper right, and account settings are really something that should be account-wide across various different workspaces, so it doesn't make sense for them to be underneath the workspace tabs in the visual hierarchy. Within each workspace, the primary sidebar that exists today is pretty solid. We're gonna keep most of it, and really the cost of changing the primary navigation paradigm in a very pervasive tool like Visual Code is really high, just not worth it. And of course, if there's something notable in either of these contacts, we have a little bubble that appears that shows people, hey, there's activity here, you should probably click this. Not changing very much here from the existing UI because at least in Western societies, having the context on the left and the, the content on the right is usually how people like to consume software interfaces. But we're gonna make a couple of tweaks. Basically every project that is being worked on nowadays is version controlled to some degree. So we're gonna put that right at the top here and allow users to switch between branches in the editor without having to use an external tool or kind of guess what branch they're on. It's right there at the top. We also want users to search for keywords and files within a given workspace. So we're gonna slap a search input just below this here. And this feels like a very appropriate place. Changing your current branch, which is the context, and then searching allows you to search everything below it. Now we'll list out all the folders and files relevant for that workspace. Much like the current UI, if a file isn't tracked via Git, we'll fade it out just a little bit. This sends a very strong signal that 
the changes you make to this file or folder are going to be local and they're not going to be preserved in your version control. Folders that are expanded are lighter than the other folders around them. And the currently open and focused file will have a nice subtle gray background. Now a lot of this is straight up copied from the existing UI with a lot of padding and alignment fixes to make the interface feel more cohesive and just organized. We're also going to add a little bit of color to each of the files to help users easily identify file types. For example, JavaScript files have the iconic yellow JavaScript color there, and we'll also indicate files that have pending changes with a solid circle indicator, uh, much like we do in the existing UI. Now, no one just has one file open for a given project. I know personally, I neglect my poor CPU and open like hundreds of files any given time. Uh, so we need an organized and cohesive way to display all the open files within a given workspace for a user. And a secondary navigation paradigm is really appropriate for this because the files are secondary to the workspace itself. Of course, we're going to emphasize the currently opened file in a similar way that we emphasize the currently open workspace. And we'll also slap another set of open files to showcase that very commonly used two column layout that's quite pervasive for code editors generally. We'll also squeeze in a little context dependent navigation so that if you want to go back and forth between say line 312 on one file and line six on another, you can do that very easily with one click. For the content body itself, we're first going to display some simple breadcrumbs. Uh, that way users know exactly where this file is when they open it. I know I have personally opened files with similar names, thinking that they're the same file, and in reality they're in a completely different folder somewhere, so this is important. We'll also add in some example JavaScript code to the editor directly. This is the Gatsby config file for my personal portfolio, if anyone's interested. And of course, we have to add some nice syntax highlighting. We can't expect people to sift through a giant white blob of text like this. It's also quite impossible to do any sort of development without line numbers. So we'll slap them in the site as well. And we're also gonna show that full file preview component that lets you get a scope of the entire file and where you're currently at on the right side of each editor. Finally, we'll add a footer to the file itself with all the relevant metadata for that file. And then we'll also duplicate that over to the other editor as well. Now, almost every development project has some sort of tooling alongside the code editing itself. Things like a debugger, a terminal, or a console for outputs and things like that. So we need a dedicated area for tools in the UI. We'll just copy all the same tool labels from the existing UI for the left side here. But we're going to redesign the way the problems appear, at least in this pane. In the existing UI, it's a little cumbersome. And I think by designing it like this with a simple drop down, it's much more clear where these issues are, how severe they are, and how to address them. And I think it makes sense to have a dedicated space in VS Code specifically for your terminal. Uh, almost every project I've worked on, you're interacting with the terminal in some way, in addition to a larger suite of tools. So we have tools on one side, and on the right side, we're going to put a simple terminal interface. We'll slap some default text in there so that users can understand what this is for, and of course, some syntax highlighting to break up the monotony a little bit. Finally, the native GitHub Copilot feature in VS Code is their flagship new feature. This is a large reason why most big development firms are using VS Code explicitly. And for the uninitiated, GitHub Copilot is essentially a really intelligent large language model that you can have a conversation with about your code. And it will give you code snippet examples or autocomplete stuff for you and just save you a bunch of time, make you more productive. But right now, if I want to have a conversation with Copilot, I need to click the dedicated sidebar icon and then type there and then come back to my editor. It's not very collaborative. The context switch is very disruptive. So instead, we've got a lot of space down here in the lower left. We can just place a persistent chat widget here that users can dismiss if they want uh, that allows me to have a conversation directly with Copilot and then copy the code straight into my editor if I want to. I'd expect that users would be able to detach this and move it around, but it would always stay on top and kind of keep track of what you're doing so it has all the context it needs to make good recommendations. So like I said earlier, Visual Studio is really okay. Like there's not any glaring usability issues, just a couple of persnickety things that I wanted to tidy up. Uh, but the marketing site, however, how dare you, Billy? This is totally inappropriate for one of the most pervasive software products in 2023. What are you doing? 
But now that we have a really robust product UI to work with, it will be very easy for us to generate imagery that makes sense on this marketing page. So let's switch gears completely and tackle this beast once and for all. Now real quick, before we start, I wanna make a caveat that you watching this, you're probably using VS Code and most developers are, which strongly implies that the website design doesn't really matter. Of all the things that Microsoft does badly, Visual Code is not one of them. <laughs> they have a pretty pervasive reach throughout the developer community, regardless of their website, right? So this is really just an exercise for me. I wouldn't recommend that they change their website. It doesn't really matter. People are gonna use VS Code anyway, but but I would imagine that at the scale Microsoft's working at, there's like a 0.01% of all their site traffic that would have converted if the site was a little bit better that just defected for some reason. And that could be several hundred thousand people. Who knows? Either way, we're gonna get in there and turn this beast into a beauty. A beauty with dark mode. So starting with the navigation, first we're gonna simplify the logo. We don't need to say Visual Studio Code, people know what Visual Studio is. And then we're just gonna slap the standard navigation links in there. We don't need to go crazy here. The primary call to action is obviously download. We're not gonna over-engineer that. Uh, but I really like that you can just search the documentation from anywhere on the site. So we're gonna reintroduce the search feature, but we're gonna put it on the left side because it feels more appropriate there, right? It's not explicitly part of navigation the site. It's definitely distinct, but it's also not a call to action. Now the hero section really needs to blow people's socks off. Like I say all the time, the efficacy of your homepage hero is largely what determines how well your site is going to convert visitors into customers. So we're going to start with a big bold header that clarifies the purpose of the page and also speaks to the authority of VS Code. The call to action is the same here, but we're also gonna introduce that drop down again so that users can download different versions or experimental builds if they want to. And of course, to get Microsoft's legal team off my ass, we're gonna introduce a little disclaimer below the button that tricks people into agreeing to all their terms and conditions. <laughs> On the right side of the hero section, we'll have a screenshot of that beautiful product UI we just built, and we'll tilt it a little bit so it kind of looks like it's floating in space. And then using this effect even more, we can float the Copilot window that we built on top of that, uh, because Copilot really is their main selling point right now. And this also just looks kind of cool. We'll also add a subtle blue radial gradient on the background here to add some depth to the right side of the hero. Now it looks like these two images are just floating on top of each other and casting a blue shadow. And finally, we're gonna add a really subtle background grid that makes the site look more like a workshop than anything else. And I think that's really appropriate for a site like this, right? When you're in VS Code, you're building. It's like a blueprint for your software system. So this kind of really fits the aesthetic quite well. Now, if for some reason the visitor has never heard of Visual Studio Code before, we can lean on the authority of the programming languages themselves to help people build trust with the platform. So we'll cascade all the programming language icons underneath the main hero and then fade them out on either side to imply that there's many, many more as well. Again, Copilot is a revolutionary piece of technology and it's being used in pretty much every development shop right now. So it's more than just a feature. It's kind of their flagship feature. This is the reason people use Visual Studio right now. So we're gonna add a dedicated and emphasized blade just below the hero that talks explicitly about Copilot. Obviously, we'll need a simple title and description that explains the unique value proposition. The call to action here, though, needs to be subdued because it's very close to the hero call to action. If we have another blue button in here, it's going to split the visual attention and make it much less likely that a user clicks either of those call to actions. We're also going to add a new badge here, which works with the user's psychology to think, oh, this is actually something that wasn't here before. Maybe I should read this if I was going to read anything. And finally, whenever you're showcasing features like this, you must explain it visually. People do not read on the internet, so a simple functional illustration goes a long way. And how can we communicate that there's an AI tool that helps you code? Well, we could just show what some conversations might look like in chat bubbles, and then imply that the user simply copied the code from the chat into their editor with some syntax highlighting. 
I like it. This works really well. Now, of course, there's a lot of different code editors. Notepad++, Sublime Text, Visual Studio, they all more or less solve the same problem. So why would you use one editor over another? The unique value proposition of an editor are all of the benefits that it gives you beyond just the ease of use of the product. So we need to emphasize all of these features front and center somehow. But if you look on the current site, they just kind of take each feature and throw it into a blade. And not only is this super repetitive, but it sets up a dynamic where you can't really put that many features on here because you're just gonna keep expanding the length of the page beyond what you can reasonably expect someone to read. So instead of just listing the features, we can group them into feature categories and then have each of the features within those categories clickable, which will then change the context of a given blade. Also, the current feature section looks like it's Babby's first bootstrap website from 2005. Like, come on. What are we doing here, Billy? So here in this first blade, we're talking about maximizing productivity, but specifically, we're talking about IntelliSense, which is VS Code's autocomplete feature. If I'm typing something and the code editor can kind of figure out what I want to do, it will just suggest the rest of the code for me. I use this all the time and it probably gets me into trouble quite a bit, uh, but it is really useful. But again, people aren't gonna read on the internet. We need some sort of visual way to explain this feature. And what better way than a screenshot of a code editor with a snippet of how IntelliSense will actually perform the autocomplete right here in the feature blind. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other two feature categories as well, one for deployment and one for customization. For the deployment section, we really just need to show that it's super easy to get things out of your editor and into the wild somehow. And the easiest way to illustrate that is just by showing a screenshot of the terminal where we're typing a simple command like Gatsby deploy and then bing bang bosh, everything's up and ready to roll. And then we need to communicate the customizability and extensibility of the platform. The huge extension library is another big selling point of VS Code, right? You can get so many different plugins that make your life much easier. Things that improve your productivity, uh, macros. You could also install an extension that adds a helpful paperclip somewhere in the UI, if that was your thing. I'm not judging. But the easiest way to show a visual depiction of this is to just cascade a whole bunch of uh, simple plugin components to the left here and fade them out on either side to imply, hey, there are a lot of extensions to work with with VS Code. Finally, we're missing something very important here and long time demystifying design viewers, you know exactly what I'm gonna say and it's social proof. Even the Titan that is Microsoft needs to showcase that other developers use this and they love it. So we'll just have a whole bunch of testimonial components here um, that are basically just snippets from Twitter uh, from other notable developers in the community. Now it's important that we use lots of testimonials here because this is a B to C product. It's a code editor that developers use as opposed to long form testimonials and case studies, which is more appropriate for like a B to B environment where you're selling like enterprise software. And we'll also put a cheeky little screenshot of the product UI in the background here to break up the monotony of the UI. It's very easy with dark layouts to just end up with a giant black screen. It doesn't look very good or aesthetic, so little bits of flair go a long way to breaking that up. And finally, if the user has scrolled this far, we're gonna hit them with another call to action. We'll add some cheeky little text in here that should hopefully be a little bit funny and convince them to click that button. But this text looks a little bit out of place now being so far from the content above it. So we'll add a lovely little blue separator here that looks like a really kind of modern horizon almost and gets the user thinking, oh, this could be my future. This is, there's so much potential here. <laughs> yeah, maybe. And we'll just add some basic footer stuff in here with some horizontal line separators to break up the content. But the lines do look a little bit out of place with the nice sleek UI we've built so far. So again, we'll fade out the sides here. It gives it a much more modern feel and fits the rest of the aesthetic so much better. And that's it, we've redesigned both Visual Studio itself and their atrocious marketing website. And like I said, their marketing website really doesn't matter that much. VS Code will be a titan of the industry regardless of how good their marketing site is. But man, they could really squeeze out that extra 0.01% of people that might not use it because of the website, I bet. And personally, I would just love these uh, quality life improvements to VS Code itself. It would make my life as a developer so much easier. 
but let me know what you think below. Uh, feel free to trash the redesign as much as you want. I love all the feedback I get on these redesigns. And if you like this one, you'll probably also like my Windows File Explorer redesign, which I did a couple of months ago. That's right here for your viewing pleasure. But see you guys next week. Have a good one.